So a while back, I was studying a scripture, and um, in that scripture, Jesus was talking about um, worrying and how we should look up to or look at the lilies of the field and the birds of the earth and how they do not work, they do not do anything, yet our Father in heaven provides for them and he takes good care of them and he beautifies them, right? So after I studied that scripture, the Holy Spirit said to talk to me about how I've been worrying a lot. It wasn't while I was studying. He started to highlight some things. I said to, you know, remind me of certain things that I had been doing that um, showed that I was worrying, right? He started to show me the signs of worrying and anxiety. He said something to me that I want to share with you. Um, he said, whenever you worry, I wrote it down in my journal. I think I should read it out to you. He said, when you worry, you're telling me that you're capable of doing stuff. Right, you're capable. You're, you're telling me that you're capable of doing those things that you're worrying about. Like, okay, when I worry about food, I worry about clothing, I worry about my exam, worry about the uh, um, YouTube channel. I'm telling God that I'm capable of taking care of those things, but I am not. I'm not capable. I can't do anything on my own without God. So when I am worrying, that's what I am telling God. And then when I to say, uh, you tell me limited and powerless. And I am unlimited, I am all powerful. So the knowledge that God is all powerful and that all power belongs to Him and God is not limited. There's no limitation with our God. God, there's no disadvantage, there's nothing that God cannot do. That knowledge alone should stop us from worrying. Do you understand what I just said? When you have that knowledge and you let it, you you take it, you receive it as a revelation that God is all powerful. There is nothing that this God cannot do. God is capable of every and anything that He has told me. Especially, especially concerning things that God has told us before that okay, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that, and we begin to worry about those things. We are telling Him that okay, this thing that you told me that you want to do, yes, I heard you, but I want to go ahead and do it myself. Why? Because I don't believe that you can do it all. I feel like you're limited and that you do not have the power to do it. The second one is the knowledge of the fatherhood of God, the knowledge that we are sons of God, we are his children. All right, so there's a scripture that says, Behold, one manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us, um, that we should be called sons of God, right? And also another scripture says, uh, To them that believe, he has given the power to be called sons of God. So we are children of the Most High God. We are sons of God. We are his children. And so when we have that understanding and related to what fatherhood really means, Abba, meaning God is there to provide. He's a provider. He's a sustainer. He's one who's ready to watch over you. Have you, have you ever seen how um, um, hen, the mother hen, how she covers her cheeks when um, these hawks are coming to pick them up? I don't know if you've ever seen that. I've seen that before. How she covers them up. That's how God is to us. The way he covers us is there is look whatever it is that you're worrying about, whatever it is you're worrying about, God is aware of it and is a father. So when we are aware of the fatherhood of God, the father dimension of God that is my father and he loves me, whatever it is that I need, even before the need arises, God already knows that I'm going to need this thing. He created me because he mentioned it in his word that before we are created, before we are formed, rather, before we are formed in our mother's womb, he knew us and he ordained us a prophet to the nation. So he knew us before then, meaning he knew all that we needed, even before we were formed in our mother's womb. So that awareness that God is a father, God loves me, and that every right, every benefit that I should enjoy as a child of God, I will enjoy it. Everything that comes with having God as my Abba, I would enjoy it. The next thing that I want to share with you is prayer. Philippians 4 verse 7, all right, it says, I'm um, sorry, verse 6, <clears throat> it says, be anxious for nothing but in, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be known to God. Now that you have the awareness that God is Father, God is all powerful, whatever it is that you need, pray about it. So this particular scripture, Philippians 4 verse 6, that says we should pray about everything. Now NLT says, do not worry about anything, but pray about everything. Now this is it. Whenever you, you know that worry is beginning, because we are humans and these things happen. It happens to me sometimes too. That begins to even this morning, I worried about something. And I was thinking, oh my goodness, Holy Spirit, what am I supposed to do? Um, 
Honestly, I don't even have content ideas. I don't know what to even film about. I don't know what to talk about. I've not filmed anything on the YouTube channel in about a month. And there's this other thing that you want me to do. I've not done this and that. And I was like, okay, instead of worrying, instead of just sitting here and worrying, like what the three lepers said, instead of us sitting here to die, <laughs> you know, why, why about, how about we get up and we start moving? But um, I was like, instead of me just sitting here and worrying, let me pick up my Bible. The Holy Spirit must have something to say to me. There must be something that He wants to say to me right now. So I opened up the scripture and I was reading and I got to a point. I, I read a scripture and from that scripture, the Holy Spirit spoke to me that you are not out of ideas. <laughs> you are not out of ideas. I gave you some ideas in the past that you've not done anything with. So how do you expect me to now give you more when you've not done anything with what you had in the past? And that was the word. And I was like, okay, oh my goodness, let me go and bring up my journal. So I, I, I took out my journal and I opened it. And then I saw this particular note that I wrote down a few months back. Oh, uh, let's yeah, about about two months ago. And I did not do anything about it. I did not film it. I just wrote it down. And then I was like, oh, Holy Spirit, thank you. Thank you, Holy Spirit. So now why did I share that story with you? To let you know that whenever you begin to worry, go to God. Don't don't just sit there and wallow in self-pity and anxiety and you know there's a way the devil always looks for um he, he, he looks for a venue he looks for the opportunity to come and to whisper lies to us so the time of worrying and being overwhelmed and sadness and all of that is an avenue for the devil to come in and start to give you ideas and start to give you um, all manner of um opinions and start to build lies and if you believe his lies you'll be sure changing yourself because we are christians we are children of god we should not be believing the lies of the devil so instead of sitting down and worrying study the scripture instead of sitting down and worrying pray do you understand? Instead of sitting down there and just worrying about all of those things, how about you talk to God about it? Oh God, I, I have an exam and I've not studied. Oh God, this morning I was even uh, checking my journal and I saw my last last two semesters, I saw where I wrote it in my journal, the Holy Spirit, I have an exam in about three weeks and I've not studied. The Holy Spirit, I didn't care. And I did that exam and I did excellently well. Do you understand now? So that just goes to show you that when you you bring your your fears and your worry to god it will help you it will look it will give you solutions not only will it give you solutions it will give you joy it will give you peace now this is what i want you to do whenever you begin to worry about anything be it clothing be it money be it an assignment and your, your business your children your marriage whenever you notice that worries begin to build up hmm, in any area of your life pray about it do you understand? It, it doesn't have to be a long prayer. If you want to pray a long prayer, good. But if it's a short prayer, Lord, because God is always here. Lord, this is it and this is what's going on with me. Lord, I need your help. Lord, I need you to come and help me and strengthen me even in this season of my life. When you pray like that, huh? The Holy Spirit will definitely, it will definitely give you a response. Even if it doesn't talk and you, I mean, you might not hear a loud voice or something, but that peace, you know, that token of peace in your spirit, that's God. That's God's response. And sometimes it might even send you someone to come and encourage you. Sometimes it might even be through the scripture. Sometimes you might even be scrolling through um, social media and you just see something. Something just pops up and you know. So, and also it sends you help because you told him about it. Do you understand now? So, and that thing is, whenever you begin to worry like that and you want to pray to God, approach the prayer from a place of gratitude. Ask for a place of gratitude. Like, oh God, I thank you because my needs are met. Oh God, I thank you because I will do well in this exam. Oh God, I thank you because you've done this and you've done that. This is actually something that I've been doing for a while, where I just approach this from a place of uh, gratitude. This is not to say you cannot go to God and ask directly without a place of thanksgiving, but I'm saying when you notice that you're beginning to worry a lot about something, approach it from a place of thanksgiving. Oh God, I thank you because you will do this thing for me. God, I thank you because I know that I'm not alone and you're here with me, all right? So I began to do this in 2020, and these are some of the things that I noticed that happened. Number one, you begin to have the victor's mindset. <clears throat> Now, when you approach every, you begin to approach every challenge from a place of victory. Like, okay, I know, I know whom I have believed, right? And I'm persuaded. I know that knowing, that that mindset of I know that this thing has happened. I know that this thing will happen. You know, Jesus said we should have, we should be of good cheer because He has overcome the world for us. Do you understand? And if you are in Christ, that victory is yours already. Do you understand? So. There are going to be challenges, there are going to be things that will happen that will make you feel like you're alone or that will make you feel as though, oh my goodness, is the world coming to an end? But when you have this mindset that, look, this will not, this will, I won't end like this, this, this will not go on forever. Number two, rest and peace. When you 
thank God and you've accessed, uh, you've um, approached the original place of thanksgiving and you handed everything over to God, you have peace and rest. That peace that can only come from God, you know, that peace that, that exceeds human understanding that no one can understand. Because how are you in such situation and you are in this chaos and um, you are you have so much peace, you are at rest, you're not worrying, you're not running from pillar to post. Do you understand? Now, that can only uh, that can only be accessed from um, a place of prayer, communion with God. The third thing is joy. That joy can, that you can only get from the Holy Spirit. You know, you know, joy is a fruit of the Spirit. That can only be gotten from the Holy Spirit. Happiness can be gotten from things, but joy, the joy of the Holy Ghost, that joy unspeakable, you get that when you've handed everything over to God and you've, you've submitted everything to God. Now, another thing is, even when you go to God and you want to pray about it and you want to write, um, you want to pray about it, you want to study the word, sometimes you never have the right word because you're just so, you don't know. Sometimes, I mean, that happened to me when I, a lot of things is happening and I am, oh God, I don't know what to say. I don't know. I don't even know the right words to say. You can just, you can, you can just write in your journal, write to God in your journal, write a letter because I do that a lot. I write letters to God. When I write the letters, I fold them, I package them, I stick them um, to my journal. I say, God, I know you read this letter and I know you understand how I feel. Sometimes when you, you can't even write, you can't express it. You want to cry. It's fine. It's fine. That's why we, we need to have a relationship with the Holy Spirit. That place of intimacy with the Holy Spirit where you can be naked and unashamed and you can be yourself. So tell God everything. And yeah, so I'm going to leave you with a scripture from Exodus where... Uh, Moses told the children of Israel that you shall um, you shall hold your peace while God fights your battle. So God's own God's own duty is to fight your battle. Your duty is to hold your peace. All right. So whatever it is that you're going through, no matter how hard, no matter how difficult, no matter how big that mountain seems, first know that God is all powerful. God is unlimited. God is my Father, and uh, prayer. I can pray to God about it. I can study the word. The will definitely speak to me through the scripture. I'll pray about it. God will hear me. That awareness and that knowledge, that revelation will help you to stop worrying. Thank you very much for watching this video. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.